Hello parents, grandparents, caregivers, and teachers. In this video, I'm going to give you some fun ideas you can use to tie in with your reading of the book, Madeline. Yay! Hello, I'm Jill Erbach of Early Learning Loft. If you haven't checked out my YouTube channel for children, you can get to it by clicking the link above, and I'll also put a link in the description below. I am a former elementary school teacher and homeschool mom, and I'm also an author, and today I've got some ideas for activities and conversation starters that you can use to expand your child's experience of the children's classic, Madeline. All right, so what sort of discussions can the book Madeline prompt? I think you can get meaningful discussion from any children's book. We just have to look for our prompting points. These are the pages I think you'll find the best prompts in Madeline. This spread, for example, they smiled at the good and frowned at the bad. Ask your child to look at the picture. Observe in here. What's good in this picture? Probably that he's being nice to the horse, right? Sometimes you might get a child saying, oh, he's rich. Well, okay, but that's a chance to go deeper too, because is just being rich necessarily a good thing? You can decide what you want to do with that, but maybe that would be an opportunity to talk about why is rich good? Well, it gives him an opportunity to use his money to do good in the world. Maybe he could donate to the school. Same thing here, what's bad in this picture? Obviously, we've got a robber, we have the policeman chasing the robber. This would be a good opportunity to ask your child what Madeline and her friends might be thinking and feeling as they watch this happening. That could be scary. This one as well, and sometimes they were very sad. In this picture, they notice the person who's hurt. Why does that make them sad? because they feel bad for him. That's empathy, that's a good thing for them to feel. You can also have them look at what he's wearing and based on what he's wearing, have them guess what he might be doing. He's in some sort of a uniform. There's a good chance that he is a soldier, so he was fighting for his country. That's a good thing. Another opportunity to talk about service. So Madeline has to go to the hospital and have her appendix removed and eventually her friends get to go visit. So, Again, we can learn about visiting etiquette because when you go visit somebody at the hospital, it's not the same as running over to your friend's house, is it? They buy her flowers. It's always nice to bring a present to somebody in the hospital. And here when they go in, the word that's used is solemn. You can talk about that vocabulary word and just how it's proper and respectful to be quiet when we first go into a hospital room. Even if after we go in, it doesn't need to be so quiet anymore. And then there's the end, the unsurprising child response where all the little girls are crying and saying they want their appendix out too. Ask your child why they're crying. Really, it comes down to they wish they had the attention and all the stuff that Madeline got. And you know what? That is a completely natural response. But then you can also talk about what Madeline had to endure and what she missed out on. She missed out on her friends and time at school. There was probably a lot of pain. She's gonna not be able to participate in some things for a while while she's healing. So you can bring it back around. Madeline takes place in Paris. And what is the iconic structure in Paris? The Eiffel Tower. Well, a great STEM activity for your child after reading the book is to have them build the Eiffel Tower. So you can start by just checking out the cover and these amazing drawings by Ludwig Bemelmans. You can also find gazillions of pictures of the Eiffel Tower online. And if you've been there, this might be a fun opportunity to just happen to have some snapshots that you can impress your child with. So have your child look at the structure and point out what he sees. Feel free to point out things like the wide base and arch and the smaller second base before we get to the tall tower part. Next, you're just gonna have your child start to build. Some kids will just wanna go for it. Some will take time to think it through. Depending on whether you're more an unschooler or whether you're in a classroom and you want a specific plan for the kids to follow, you can approach it however you want. If you wanna have the kids create a two-dimensional tower, you can have them just use plastic straws if you can still get those, and cut them into different sizes, or you could use craft sticks or even bamboo skewers, and then just glue them onto paper for a two-dimensional tower. Here are some examples I've found online. But if you wanna go three-dimensional, and why wouldn't you? It's the Eiffel Tower. You have a lot of options to choose from. You could have the kids build with blocks, or Legos are pretty awesome, or Duplo blocks, or pipe cleaners, or those classic stem supplies marshmallows, and toothpicks. 
If you wanna go the toothpick and marshmallows route, you can start with something simple like this. Ta-da! Or there are some pretty amazing ones that kids could do, and here's some pictures. A good thing to use if you've got older kids and they want to attempt a bigger Eiffel Tower is to use spaghetti because you can get those longer strands. But one, make sure you use spaghetti and not thin spaghetti. And even regular spaghetti can be tricky because it's easy to break when you're sticking it into the marshmallows. If you know the book Mad Line, you know the girls do everything in two straight lines. Let me read you some of the pages. In an old house in Paris that was covered in vines lived 12 little girls in two straight lines. In two straight lines they broke their bread, brushed their teeth, and went to bed. So, this activity is called Walk the Line, and all you'll need is a roll of painter's tape. You can do this activity with just one child, but it's more fun if you have two or more, so you can have two lines, just like Madeline School. All you do is put a line of tape on the floor. If you've got littles like preschoolers, um, the line's probably only gonna need to be about eight feet long. If your kids are a little older, they'll probably want a longer line. Then instruct your kids to stand at one end of the line and call out a way to go down the line. You can have fun with it. Start with just walking. You could even do the kind of walking where it's one foot exactly in front of the other on the line. That's a good balancing activity, especially for younger kids. Then just take turns calling out a bunch of different things. They can march, they can bunny hop, they can side shuffle, they could do a conga, they could walk like an elephant. You could let the kids take turns choosing how they wanna go down the line. It occurs to me that you could have fun with this with older kids doing it outside, almost like a parkour course. Parkour is that kind of outdoor activity that's gotten pretty popular with fitness people where you're using things out in your environment to get exercise. And in this case, what you would do is take your painter's tape and you wouldn't just use the whole tape, but you could take pieces and make kind of a dotted line from point A to point B making sure that there are some obstacles in the way. Then you have your older child get from point A to point B. I wouldn't worry so much about the hopping or the congoing or that kind of stuff. The point is to scramble over the different things. This would be a really fun thing to do on a playground. Like maybe they have to climb up the ladder of the slide and go down because one piece of tape is at the bottom of the stairs and the other piece of tape is at the bottom of the slide and they can't go around it. They have to go up and down and then you have them keep going straight until maybe they have to go through the swings. Do it at a time when the playground's not busy though. Before I tell you our third activity, which involves food, let me know in the comments below if you've read any of the other books in the Madeline series and if so, which one is your child's favorite? Favorite. Did you know there are 15 books in the series? Also, if this video is inspiring some ideas for you, feel free to hit the subscribe button and click that little notification bell and you'll be alerted when my next videos come out. Okay, for this last activity, which is a perfect segue into snack time, we are going to build the Eiffel Tower with fruit. I'll put a picture up on the screen so you can see what it looks like. You're just going to need half a banana that you'll cut in half again, and then you might wanna trim a little bit off so it's not too fat. You'll have a total of 12 raspberries and 10 blueberries. And then you'll just follow the pattern in the picture. Start with the raspberries, two by two to build the base, six on each side, and then the two banana strips. And then for the blueberries, you have three across, then two, 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 and one. I have a confession. I am an awesome teacher, I'm an okay crafter, and that includes crafting with food. So, anything that you ever see on this channel, if I can do it, you can do it. In fact, I guarantee yours will look better. And then, of course, if you like to bake, you could just make Madeline's the cookie. I'll put a link in the description below to a cooking video that you could follow. It won't be me doing the cooking. Additionally, if your child likes paper dolls, there are some lovely paper doll sets out there that might be fun for your child. There's also lots of virtual tours of Paris online. I'll link to a couple below. Oh, and I have a couple other links that I think will surprise you with, so make sure you look below in the description because there are some fun videos that I think you'll wanna check out that your kids could have fun with. Well, thank you for joining me today. I hope you got some ideas and inspiration from Madeline, and if you did, I hope you hit the little thumbs up, and I hope you'll subscribe. Bye-bye. Build the Eiffel Tower with fruit. Ha! <laughs> Ha! <laughs>